It's not good enough to like something. If you want to be good at something, then you could like it. You want to be great at something, you better love it. This is how you get the ladies. From what Ben Patrick's telling me, he's over toes guy. The chicks take big tips. So here I am, working as hard as I can. Women don't care if you're tall. They don't give a fuck if you have a lot of money. They certainly don't care about the size of your... All they care about is that you got some unrelenting, gigantic tips. Chicks dig big tips. I need 99, 100. Woo. What's up, Mark? Thank you for having me here. The goal is unorthodox, but it's pretty simple. We're trying to get the, like one of the best workouts we've ever had, yet every single ingredient being healing the body. Normally we think of those as like two opposing factors, and so it can kind of create a cycle of injuries or getting out of shape or not being able to play your sport. So we're trying to actually blend those worlds of getting the best workout you've ever had with getting the best healing you've ever had at the same time. So we're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm gonna work my balls off for you, Mark. All right. Uh, just an observation, not coming at anybody with anything, with any hatred or not coming from a place of any disdain, but I am noticing quite a bit of mullets. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I'm at the county fair or if I'm in a gym or what's going on or if this is a flashback to my youth when I myself had a mullet. I'm Mark Smelly Bell. Thank you guys so much for showing up to my gym today. Much appreciated. This whole thing started in ter not in terms of my life because I don't want to. I don't want to make this uh, seminar too exciting. If I was explaining my life story to you, you guys would be just super fired up and super pumped, and I don't know what would happen. So we're going to skip over some of that. But the way that this seminar came to be is I was looking up some stuff one day on a guy named Charles Poliquin. Charles was a mentor to me. He was an idol of mine. He's somebody I had great respect for as a coach. The way he was as a person, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> he was an awesome dude. He was an awesome guy. He was somebody that I could call a friend and uh, somebody who really challenged the way that things were getting done and, and the perceived way that you got strong and the perceived way that you gained strength and the perceived way that you got jacked and the perceived way you got uh, super strong and were able to achieve all kinds of different things from an athletic standpoint. And I gravitated heavily towards that. I remember paying for a phone consultation with Charles Poliquin, which cost quite a bit of money. And I remember having my M&M moment where my voice was quivering and I couldn't really even get out a sentence or two even though I had a list of about 25 questions <laughs> for him for a 25 minute call. Uh, anyway, long after that, uh, he became somebody that I got, uh, got to have a personal relationship with over the years and somebody that really inspired me. More recently, I was on one of my walks and I was like, you know what? I need to look up more stuff on Charles Poliquin again. I need to kind of brush up on some of his information. And when Charles was alive, he guarded a lot of his information because he had a lot of great things to say and he wouldn't allow people to release information on him for years. So a seminar like this wouldn't be released to the public, wouldn't be released on the internet for three or four years. He said, I only, wanna, I only want people to know what I, <laughs> what I used to do. He, he wants people to have old information, but he wanted to share the new information with his newer clients and, and things of that nature and do it in person. Anyway, I looked up some stuff on him. He passed on a couple years ago. And once he did that, then people were able to release his content. And so there's a flooding of a lot of content of Charles Poliquin on the internet. I started researching it and looking into it again. And it got me thinking about some of these seminars that he did. And they were real dynamic and they were, uh, they were changing people's lives. As awkward as it may sound to teach somebody how to get bigger arms, can be transformative to their life. To teach people how to have bigger quads can be transformative to their life. What we've done in here at Super Training Gym is we've built up many individuals to have 
500 pound squats, 600 pound squats, seven, 800, 900. We've had a handful of people squat over 1,000 pounds, including myself. We've had a number of people bench press over 700 pounds, 800 pounds, and even one guy that did 900 pounds. We've had many 800 pound deadlifts, many 700 pound deadlifts. And that all came to be by building a community and by having people around that are inspired and people that understand the idea of that if you walk with the lame, you will develop a limp. You need to be around like-minded people that are savages, people that want to get better, people that understand what it takes to be better, people that understand what it takes to self-improve. Charles Poliquin was a no bullshit person and he gave it to you very straight. And as I was listening to some of these messages that he had, I thought of my buddy Ben Patrick, because Ben Patrick was also inspired by Charles Poliquin. And it just, it just clicked with me. I was like, Ben Patrick, he's on fire. This guy's killing it. Teaching all these people to squat super low, <laughs> which is kind of funny to me because we never cared about squatting low. We never cared about this ass to grass thing that you guys are so obsessed with. It actually seems very silly to me because all I ever cared about was lifting the most amount of weight. And we didn't really care too much if you cheated a little bit. And even if you cheated a lot, we kind of looked past it. We're like, dude, that was 900, I was sick. <laughs> but I've been inspired by the movement as well. I've been incorporating a lot of the things that Ben has taught me. Getting big tibs is a thing. It does help a lot. It does help you to produce more force. It does help you to drive through the ground more. It does help you in your day-to-day -day life, getting in and out of your car, getting up and down stairs. All things that were extremely challenging when I was 330 pounds and I was squatting 1,000 pounds week in and week out. The joints, the body starts to get really stiff and I wish I knew some of these things back then. But I just couldn't believe it when it clicked in my head. I was like, I don't think Ben's ever done a seminar. He's got all this momentum. He's got all these great people behind him and I don't think he's ever done a seminar. So I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit this guy up right now and I'm gonna see if he wants to do a seminar at Super Training Gym. I'm like, that's gonna be epic. That's gonna be amazing. And so that is what brought us here today. I couldn't be any more fired up and excited about it before I introduce Ben and before he hits you with a whirlwind of exercises. You guys are gonna be moving around a lot. We have a lot of magnificent coaches here today. They're gonna to take you through a lot of drills. Before we do that, I want to pay homage to my mother, Rosemary Bell, who died on this very day last year. My mother was a person that had a really hard time with figuring out how to put one foot in front of the other, how to get herself into motion. And it's because of a lot of the things that happened in her life. She had a lot of life experiences that made the things that she was trying to do and the things that she wanted to implement. She didn't want to die. She didn't want to be obese. She didn't want to have diabetes. She didn't want any of these things for herself. And I think that we have a hard time sometimes uh, being compassionate towards other people and understanding, man, their experience is way different than mine. I don't know what it's like to be mentally abused. I don't know what it's like to be told. I don't know what it's like to be fat and to be told that I'm fat by my own parents. I don't know what it's like to be sexually abused. I don't know what any of those things are like. I don't know what it's like to be black. I don't know what it's like to be Asian. I don't know what it's like to be Mexican. I don't know, I do know what it's like to have a mullet. I remember that, that was sick. But I don't know, I don't know shit about any of these things. What I do know is that everyone can be a little bit better than they were yesterday. And what I do know is that everyone can take a step, if you will. Maybe there's somebody that doesn't have the, maybe they don't have legs. And so maybe an actual step, but then maybe they can take a step in the right direction. I think we can get everybody on the page of agreeing with that. However, only a healthy mind can receive healthy information that's helpful. Somebody might give you healthy information that's helpful and you might stiff arm it because you're not ready for it in that moment, because you're tied to your experiences. And I've seen it happen time and time again. So it's our job, everyone in this room today, it's our job to inspire and help improve 
the lives of every single person that we're in contact with in whatever little, small, tiny way that we can. Because success and greatness is in small, incremental steps done over a long period of time. A long period of time. I started lifting when, I'm, when I was 12. I'm 475 years old now. So I've been lifting for a long ass time. It takes a long time to get good at something. It's not good enough to like something. If you want to be good at something, then you could like it. You want to be great at something, you better love it. You better have your heart into it. You better have your soul into it. It better mean the world to you. There's, when I went through school, I struggled like hell. I had a really hard time with reading. Math seemed impossible. And I remember my teacher, my math teacher, Mr. Gallagher, who was redder than a lobster. I'm not sure why. Maybe because he was mad all the time or something. I don't know. But I remember him calling me out in front of the entire class and saying, hey, guys, Mark takes three hours to get done, get done with his homework. Anybody else struggling like that? Like, Hey, so-and-so, how long does it take you? Like 20 minutes. Hey, so-and-so, how long? And so he was like, I don't understand what your issue is. I'm like, I don't understand what my issue is either. But math is fucking impossible. I'm pretty sure of that. For whatever reason, I just struggled with that. That was something that was difficult for me. Looking back at it, I took on, I took on this idea that I was dumb, that I was stupid. It was a belief that I carried with me for a lot of my childhood. As I've gotten older, I recognized that that was irrational and I recognized all the little steps that I missed that I didn't take, the same steps that my mother had trouble taking. So while I might think I'm a badass now and I think, hey man, why can't you just take a step? You should be able to do that. I was paralyzed by my own thoughts at one time as well. One of my goals as I got older I watched a movie called Rocky, and one of my goals as I got older, Rocky has an amazing quote in the movie. It might be something that gets passed by some other people. But he says to his wife, he's in bed with her before he's going to fight Apollo. It's the night before the fight. And he says, I just want to prove that I'm not another bum from the neighborhood. That really meant a lot to me. I attached myself to that because I don't know how to be great. I don't know how to be good at anything. I was a young, dumb kid. I didn't know math. I had a hard time reading. I had amazing supportive parents and two amazing brothers. So that carried me through a lot of things. But I didn't know how to do shit. And I was scared to get a job. I was scared to do much of anything. But just attaching myself to that one thing, I don't want to be another bum from the neighborhood. It allowed me to take my shot. It allowed me to take chances. It allowed me to take risks. Because later on in life, I knew that the only way I was going to be able to get myself out of any of these situations or get out of my own thoughts of thinking that I was dumb was through myself. So you guys are here to receive some great information from a lot of great individuals. But the greatest person you can ever ask a question to is the person that you see in the mirror every morning. The greatest podcast you would ever listen to is one that you are strong enough and willing enough to do with yourself, to examine, self-examination, to talk to yourself, to communicate with yourself, to think about your thoughts and think about how you can be more productive. And if you're having a hard time thinking about how to make yourself better, work on helping other people and it will automatically click and you will automatically be better. Over a long period of time, you will keep taking the right steps. And as you take those steps, you'll look, out, you'll look up and you'll be surrounded by a crowd of people that think that you're great. And you'll go, hi, you talking to me? I'm just a fat kid from Poughkeepsie that doesn't know how to do any math. <laughs> it takes a lot of time, but you have to hang in there. And you have to be willing to take the shots. If you remember, one more thing here, 
if you remember, in Rocky, when Rocky first gets the opportunity to fight Apollo Creed, they bring him in, they sit him down in a chair, and they say, we're giving you this wonderful opportunity. And before they say anything else, he says, hey, I just want you to know, I'm not going to take any cheap shots at the champ. You know, uh, I'm going to be really respectful, and I'm going to be a great sparring partner for Apollo Creed. Rocky didn't think he was even worthy of being in the ring with Apollo Creed. He didn't think he was worthy of doing that. And so the guy had to inform him, no, 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 we're not asking you to spar with him. We're asking, asking you to fight him. And that, that sparks some inspiration. You end up with, you know, this great underdog story that you can get fi fired up about. But your own self-belief is going to be a massive determining factor in the different things that you can do in your life. When Ben came here the first time and he's showing me all these bendy weird things, I'm like, can't, 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 can't. I can't do that. I can't. And, I'm, and, and so then I start talking to myself and I talk myself off that ledge. I say, why are you saying that to yourself? You never even tried some of these movements. Let's try some of these movements. Let's do what he's saying. Let's start with his zero program, which, by the way, is genius. How do you sell somebody on, on nothing? <laughs> Why don't you try this zero program and see what it can do for you. Maybe it'll allow you to start to take steps in the right direction. Guys, I'm truly honored here today to have Ben Patrick and his team. Thank you guys so much for coming. Guys, Ben Patrick. Thank you for that. I mean, first off, are you freaking kidding me? Let's yeah. give it for Mark Let's fucking go. Bell. There's, there's not a lot of really successful people who are going to teach you how to be a better person. That's right. Okay. My life motto is, is change lives, business falls. It's directly from Mark. What you don't see is when I text Mark and I'm worried about something, and he texts me back like five minutes later, totally getting my mind right. Okay. With like... What is he getting out of it? Do you see what I'm saying? I was shocked when he originally reached out to me in March and even more shocked that he wanted to put on a seminar. So, um, yeah, I'm a, just a fragile kid who can't jump and has knee pain. And, um, and this is super fun for me being here today because last year and a half I've been a stay-at-home dad. I think, I think the people at my local coffee shop think I don't have a job. <laughs> um, and then factor in, I, you know, I got like five hotel rooms thinking like, you know, maybe a few ATG coaches would show up, you know. By the end, look around you. So we're going to be pairing up today. You're literally, because you're going to pair up with a partner so that you go and then you rest, we actually have enough coaches that every single rep you do this entire day is going to be watched, okay? And now think about what's in it for them, you know. So if you thank me today, don't, like honestly, don't thank me. Thank Mark. Thank these guys for being here. And... Let's honor Mark's mom because I think that we take the genius of Charles Poliquin who trained, um, wh where's Ben at? Ben probably knows the figures best, but I'm pretty sure he trained the most Olympic medalists ever. At least 20. Over, over, 24. Over, for medalists. Yeah, over 24 uh, gold medalists. Golds. Over 24 different sports. 24 different sports gold, gold medal. You know. Yeah, I mean, if you just work with one sport, that's one thing. If you figure out how to get gold medals in 24 different sports, <laughs> right? And then so for me as a fragile guy, you know, if there's anything I can do, I feel like my mission is taking his genius, but then actually turning it into stuff for, for fragile people. So we actually, our, our breakthroughs continue to be in reverse, <laughs> you know? That being said, like, I know this guy, unbelievable athlete. Like, the stuff you see me doing on my page, you, he does it better, okay? And even he... My goal is that today is like one of the best workouts he's ever had in his life. But my goal is that the most fragile person here has the best workout of their life. So your goal on everything we do today is you're thinking, and every coach is going to be working with you on this, how does this relate to healing your body and then bridging that gap between exercise that we know we need? You know what I mean? Look how many people in the world are struggling with obesity because they can't exercise, because they're in pain. And it's so easy to just blame them. So that's why I think... It couldn't be more fitting to dedicate it to Mark's mom because we actually have the tools to do something about 100%. that. So we're going to start getting broken up here. Um, the coaches themselves are extremely organized. 
And we knew that we'd have like 50 or less people, so we thought we'd break it up into five stations. Before we break into five stations, we're actually all going to do a gentle warm-up process together. Like literally, everyone's going to do it together. And the coaches will be alongside you. And it scales. And since that's the opening thing, if it's not even feeling right, you don't have to do it. In a perfect world, everyone here would just start walking backward with the sled at some level. We don't have the space for that, so we're going to use kind of a little tricky innovation in order to get healing going without the space for a sled. So this might be a tool you could use. So the very first thing we're going to do, if you were helping somebody else and they just didn't have access to a sled, they might be able to do this. And my, my dad, uh, thank goodness for my dad because he is like a stubborn mule with joint elbow pain, knee pain, back pain, and he's winning and exercising now. So. I, I think some of the coaches said, like, it's easier to get your mom to work out, you know, than your dad. <laughs> but, but then also people struggling with their weight is a big, it's a big issue that everyone here, not just the coaches, everyone here right now is going to be learning what we know about having real success with, you know, getting that to occur. I, I want to add to that for just yeah. a second. If you are to take the greatest athletes of all time that are currently very healthy, you take uh, LeBron and you take Tom Brady, and whoever, whoever else you want to put in that category, you give them the same pulses of people that are having a hard time getting off their couch, give them the same hormonal profile, give them the same pain, they most likely will have a, maybe they'll still move a little bit, but over time that'll wear away at them and they will most likely want to stay on the couch as well. This is not always just about mind over matter. It is initially because you have to get momentum. And remember, once you have momentum, that's when, that's when the right things start to happen for you. That's when dopamine's released in the brain. Once you have that little bit of inertia, do more, be more. The more that you do, the more that you can do, and the more that you can handle. What I'm talking about so much right now is how to deflect and how to defend and how to, how to have the skill set so that anything that comes at you, you can beat the fucking shit out of it. Bruce Lee is my spirit animal, if you will. <laughs> and I use that as a metaphor of, think about being in like the worst situation and you think five people are gonna jump you and they wanna inflict harm on you. Maybe they wanna kill you, maybe they wanna steal something from you. But imagine being the guy that walks into that scenario and you're like, I've been practicing this my entire life. <laughs> this is going to be a great opportunity to defend myself and to kind of maybe even show these people what's up. Imagine having that level of skill set. So think about the stresses that come at you in life, whether it be divorce or some sort of illness or some sort of pain, whatever it is. Take any of those scenarios and imagine if you just have the skill set that when it comes towards you, even the word stress, I would encourage all of you, challenge all of you to reinterpret stress. You guys all already know this. Little, little bits of stress are amazing for us. The resistance of life, lean into it. Lean into the knees over toe idea. I mean, how, how crazy is that? Right? That the very thing that I'm talking about right now is where life is difficult push into it a little further, push into it a little bit more because you're going to squeeze a little bit more out of it each time. And when you get more out of it, you're going to be able to continue to do more. It seems like such a simple concept. And I think, I think a lot of times we miss out on it, but look at what he's been able to do. Look at this following that he's been able to have. When he walked through here yesterday, I got goosebumps head to toe. I've only had that happen to me one other time. And it was when I invented the slingshot, which changed my life forever from a financial standpoint and changed my family's life forever as well. And the reason why that happened was I saw the way a lot of you guys were gathering around him. And I saw the way a lot of you guys and girls were looking at him. And I was like, oh, that's all this stuff I've been doing for so long. I'm like, I encouraged him. And now look what's going on. Holy shit. I I've understand that because you guys do come up to me and you 
hug me and you grab me and you shake my hand and tell me the impact that I have. But I hear that a lot. I see that a lot. I already kind of know about that. But when I saw Ben walking through here and he had an entourage of people like walking literally just wherever he was kind of walking, that inspired and motivated me. And I was like, holy shit, that makes everything I've been doing worth it. Thousands of videos, thousands of podcasts, thousands of workouts, hundreds of times uh, getting banged up elbows, banged up knees, banged up this, banged up that, sacrificing for the unknown for decades on end, not knowing what it all meant. And then kind of seeing that. I, I want to make the world a better place to lift. And for a long time, I thought it was going to be like just me talking about me and the cool things that I do. And then I saw that and I was like, ah, I'm like, that's what it is. Okay. He's younger than me. He'll be able to deliver the message. He'll be able to inspire other people. Those people will be able to inspire other people and it'll have a crazy domino effect. I did not know that. I did not understand that until he walked into the building yesterday. Thank you. Mark's, Mark's amazing. We're blessed as hell for him. It starts with Mark. Mark is such a special person. He had the idea for this, put it together. He's the one who's really put me on a spotlight. He saw this guy's trying to help people. Mark wants to help people. He's my business mentor now. Change lives, business follows. Best advice I could possibly give someone for business. So all the credit goes to Mark. Then coming down, I want to help people. You can see we had like almost 30 coaches, ATG coaches from around the world show up just to help people. I mean, that's really special. I haven't seen anything like that. And I just want to credit them and just show like, like what that means when you realize that helping other people is perhaps the key to our own happiness. And those guys did that today. And then Mark's staff and even the people who showed up, it was, um, it was the most positive thing I've ever been a part of in my entire life. So thank you, Mark. I mean, my opinion of what I'm trying to do with my career is put together a system that anyone could learn and understand. You could apply it to any age to be able to get a workout, like to exercise in a way that's going to heal and bulletproof your body. So I think there's all kinds of amazing sports and I'm not trying to compete with any of these sports or any of these fitness disciplines. I'm trying to just add something new into the equation where you can go get a workout that's going to make you healthier, more able in whatever those sports are, whatever your fitness goals are. So I'm not trying to make the world's best fitness system. I'm trying to make the world's best fitness accessory system so that you can enjoy doing what you like to do, which for me is basketball, you know, but there's so many different parts of, of fitness that extend beyond that. So um, I think we're doing a good job. I think that I still have a long ways to go. So this was a great step forward doing this but it's already given me ideas how to get even better. So I can't wait to keep working with Mark, keep showing you new stuff. I've learned that we have to think of every exercise as something that's scalable that anyone like can do, not putting so much can't there. But at the same time, I, I've been obsessed with, with these regressions, but I have to stay just as obsessed, if not more obsessed than ever, that, it's, that it gets even easier to learn, like here's something I'd like to be able to do, like, oh wow, I can do it right here and start in and this feels great and no pain. So basically it shows me that we're on the right track, but I need to keep actually feeding the regressions and nuances that makes it actually like enjoyable to get into exercises. What's up guys, Jason here with ATG, here in Sacramento at Mark Smelly Bell's gym. Going to bring about 300 people through one of the best uh, ATG workouts to date. There's 26 coaches here today. We spent three or four hours yesterday getting this workout together for people. And I'm super excited. I'm stoked just to be with Ben. He's one of the nicest guys. And everybody here has got great attitude. And we're just looking to bring that energy here to Sacramento and, and leave it with these people and hopefully grow this whole thing that we're doing. The knees over toes programming and the methodology, what I've seen in about the last year to year and a half, is not only has it changed athletes' lives and their ability to play their sport without pain, but it's changed the way people think about training in a larger sense in that there are things we've been taught that may not be correct. So knees over toes is something that a lot of us have learned to be afraid of. But if you approach it methodically and at a level that's right for you, even something like that can be worked through 
and then eventually lead to a better result than shying away from your pain. Um, when I found Ben Patrick's stuff, it was incredible because it reinforced a lot of what me and my ancestors used to do, which is squat with our knees going forward. So this just validated it because I was always told never to cross to toes. And I feel like I was so limited by other trainers. But really, I mean, the minute I started this, it felt so liberating and I made progress quicker than I could have ever imagined. Strong, 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 strong. Yeah. So I found him through the podcast and I started doing a little bit of that stuff then. So I wanted to come check out the seminar today because number one, I wanted to make sure I was doing it right. You know, and I'm just working out in my garage. So I, I know I, I got to be able to do things right to get the most benefit out of it. So that's why I'm here today. I play basketball, so gotcha. I really relate to yeah. that aspect of Ben's story. Okay. Um, and in just the past month, I already feel so much stronger, uh, safer playing. Uh, I feel bouncier, okay. which is really good as a basketball player, yeah. right? I feel like you have like your base, you know, under you. Yeah. It's been awesome. I'm, I'm a big basketball fan, right? And uh, I'm a big Warrior fan. Uh, so I saw that uh, Ben was working with uh, Festus Azili, yeah. the big seven-footer. He yeah. always had knee problems. I remember, you know, he yeah. couldn't stay on the court. Right. I've been, my name's Young. I've been doing the ATG program for three months. And I taught martial arts for about 15 years. I had a Achilles rupture. I had a shoulder dislocation. And I thought this is the best way to repair my body, heal everything, and you know what it is. Like his methods are just the best. Anyone can follow it. I'm able to go down and pick my baby up without any, without groaning, without complaining. You know, my baby wants up, up. I grab her. I throwing her over my shoulder. Just she loves it. I love it. It's just, uh, it's just the best way for me to be stay active and be a dad. You know, uh, I walked in and I was actually pretty intimidated. You know, there were a lot of very big guys. You know, very CrossFit guys, powerlifter guys. And I have never met a community more welcome and more friendly. Everyone is here, everyone's excited to learn. Everyone's super friendly. Everyone's giving each other tips and tricks and uh, motivating each other. It's, it's actually, uh, no, I haven't seen anything like this where everyone's just a huge group of community and friends. I think it's amazing that people are rethinking like just the standards, like knees over toes was like, such a taboo thing for so long and people are so open you know it really brings people together when like people are like aha i'll try something new and uh, really facilitates like this huge community of people willing to try something and finding the benefits i heard about uh knees over toes earlier this year i started the coaching program probably in uh in august about three months ago from the first workout i kind of saw i had a little bit of patellar tendinitis the first workout that it really alleviated that quite a bit and uh i'm just slowly slowly getting stronger fear for my knee <laughs> so i have a little tendonitis in my right knee that gets exacerbated with bicycling and i like to bicycle so um these exercises help my knee hey my name is dustin maher from madison wisconsin and i'm here in sacramento because i'm supposed to be doing my seventh iron man but uh, we have the cyclone bomb happening right now iron man got canceled this morning at six in the morning hour before we started I knew uh, Ben Knees Over Toes was holding a seminar here, I'd seen that, and I just showed up, I hadn't signed up, and I uh, got a 30 minute ride here uh, from where I was staying, and they, they let me in, and, and here I am, and um, I was planning on joining the program next week after I recovered from Ironman, but I'm starting today, I'm signing up, and uh, excited about it. I just got off being beating cancer. For me, it's just getting back into shape, and getting back healthier. And stronger. I've been doing just some of the regular exercises, step ups, some of the tip raises and things like that. I had knee surgery about three years ago and it's really been an integral part in kind of helping me progress, being able to get back to uh, squatting and deadlifting, kind of everything involved with my knee.